welcome to my channel department of chemistry university of kashmir in this video we will discuss the relaxation processes that is occurring in the nmr spectroscopy and uh, after that we will discuss the types of relaxation processes and the mechanism of relaxation processes this is a very important video and in this video we will see and we will get know about the what is the saturation and the rest of things as well and uh, this video uh, is connected with, with my uh, video second if you want to understand this video well please watch my video second so let us start relaxation processes Before we start, I will revive a little bit of my previous lecture so that you will understand this topic very well. As I have to, I will take a simple uh, case of hydrogen nucleus because it contains only two energy levels. And as I have already told you that our hydrogen nucleus has nuclear spin quantum number I value 1 by 2. It is I value is equal to 1 by 2. So it corresponds to the two MI values. MI values plus minus 1 by 2 that means for hydrogen nucleus it has two uh, uh, degenerate energy levels plus minus 1 by 2 where the magnetic moment can be have and under, under the influence of external magnetic field what happens the splitting will occur and the plus 1 by 2 state will interact and minus 1 by 2 state will repel but it occurs only by the application of secondary external magnetic field B0 okay and in relaxation process, we are going to discuss the relaxation. We give the symbols two energy levels. We call the plus one by two state an alpha energy state and minus one by two state as a beta energy state. So we have a general conclusion that for our hydrogen nucleus, we have a two energy levels, alpha energy level and beta energy level. Okay. But our sample does not contain only one hydrogen. There are millions of hydrogens. So uh, these hydrogen, these millions of hydrogen can have two energy levels for the uh, for the magnetic moment. Either these, uh, either the magnetic moment can be in plus one by two state or magnetic moment can be uh, can be in sorry alpha state or it can be in the beta state. So the population in alpha and beta state or any two or, or any energy levels is given by the Boltzmann's distribution law. Why we find the population between the energy levels so the population the population between two energy levels is given by the voltage distribution of the population Okay, the Boltzmann distribution law is number of particles in higher energy level, but in our uh, discussion, higher energy level is the beta and the lower energy level is the alpha. So, number of particles in higher energy level that is beta divided by number of particles in lower energy level that is alpha is equal to the exponential of minus delta E this delta e is the energy difference between the two energy levels divided by kt okay k is the Boltzmann's constant and t is the temperature so as per the Boltzmann's, in every system there are some population which is present in the first excited energy level because uh, some molecules have 
uh, gain it, the, the much energy and they cross the energy barrier and go into the first energy level. So uh, how much the, the first excited state is populated? Is it less populated or is it more populated? It depends upon the delta E. This delta E is the energy difference between the two energy levels. As per the uh, as per the relation of both domains, if the delta E between the this the this is a delta E, if delta E is large, very very large, that less number of molecules will take the energy from the room temperature and cross the barrier, this delta E barrier and go to the higher energy level. But if this delta E is very small, then maximum probability is that, is that maximum number of particles will take the energy, thermal energy from room temperature and cross the energy barrier and go from alpha state to beta state. So the how much the higher energy state is populated, it depends upon that this delta E, this is as per the bolt to minus, cons, this sorry, bolt to minus the relation, okay? But in case of hydrogen, the case is different because in hydrogen nucleus, the energy difference between the alpha and beta state is very, very small. So we will uh, check, uh, we will derive you the Boltzmann's, uh, sorry, we will uh, give the parameters to the Boltzmann's distribution and find out the case for hydrogen nucleus. That is, we write some lines to first. As per the hydrogen nucleus, as per the hydrogen nucleus, the delta E is very small. Okay, I have taken the values. This delta E for hydrogen nucleus is equal to 7 into 10 is power minus 26 in 2.34 Tesla field. Okay, that I have already told you that for our hydrogen nucleus, the separating, bit, uh, separating between the two energy levels, alpha and beta, depends upon the uh, citron of external magnetic field. Greater the citron, greater is the separating, lesser is the citron of external magnetic field, lesser is the separating. But if we apply the magnetic field of citron, 2.34 tesla, the, uh, the separation between the two energy levels is that much, okay? And we know the Boltzmann's K is the Boltzmann's constant and it is equal to 1.38 into 10 is power minus 23 joule Kelvin minus 1. And we know the room temperature is 300 Kelvin. Okay, we substitute the values in the Boltzmann's relation and and find out the case for the hydrogen nucleus. This is the n beta, number of particles in the beta energy state, divided by n alpha, number of particles in the alpha energy state is equal to the exponential of minus delta E, I have given the value of delta E, that is 7 into 10 is power minus 26, that is 7 into 10 is power minus 26, there is a divide and there is a k, the k value of both of is constant is 1.38, 1.38 into 10 is power minus 23 joule Kelvin minus 1, and into there is a temperature that is 300 okay as uh, by solving this we get number of particles in the beta energy state or number of nuclear spins in the beta energy level number of nuclear spins in the uh, alpha energy level is equal to the exponential of exponential of minus by solving this, it is equal to 1, uh, 1 minus 1 into 
10 is power minus 5 okay this is equal to this is equal to this is n beta divided by n alpha is equal to e raised power by solving e we get 1 minus 1 into a raised power minus 5 okay and this is equal to n beta divided by n alpha is equal to 1 minus 1 divided by 1 2 3 4 5 okay this is equal to 1 minus 0 0.00001 okay that means this is nearly equal to 1 because by subtracting this amount from 1 it is it is not 1 it is nearly equal to the 1 so we have so we have n beta divided by n alpha is is nearly equal to the 1 okay we have n beta is nearly equal to n alpha into 1 is equal to n alpha this is the both to manage relation for hydrogen nucleus okay that means from this relation we get that uh, 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 number of particles number of nuclear spins in beta energy state is nearly equal to the number of spin, uh, nuclear spins in the alpha energy state that means both the energy levels are equally populated in hydrogen nuclei but the alpha energy state is slightly slightly more populated than beta that means this is our beta energy state this is our alpha energy state both to minus condition for hydrogen nucleus is and number of spinners in the beta energy level is nearly equal to the number of spinners in the alpha energy level this is the bolt to minus relation satisfied by the hydrogen nucleus okay that means this alpha is slightly more populated than beta energy level that means most large number of spinners have taken the, taken the beta energy level In NMR spectroscopy, this is the condition of Boltzmann's Boltzmann distribution is, uh, condition before uh, the application of a perturbation. But when we apply the perturbation in the form of a radio frequency, we shine our nuclear spin status to, by radio frequency. What happens? This uh, first I will tell you. Uh, this slightly excess population is responsible for uh, for uh, signals in the NMR spectroscopy because when we uh, shine this radio frequency what happens these slightly excess nuclei absorb the radio frequency when it matches to the delta E and these slightly excess nuclei can transit from alpha energy state to beta energy state okay that means suppose it is the spectrum where we are measuring this is the detector here okay this is the detector it is mm, detecting the radio frequency when we are shining the radio frequency which uh, our detector is detecting the frequencies and the one frequency that matches that this delta e and by matching this delta e the nucleus excess nuclei in the lower energy state absorb it and go into the higher energy first the detector is detected nothing is absorbed and the frequency matches there is an absorption and there will come a peak and again there is a nothing okay in this way but after a after a few time some time what happens when these nuclei go into the higher energy state after that this signal vanishes and there is not any signal and we did not observe any signal there because what is going to happen when we apply the radio frequency, slightly excess go into the higher energy level. Okay, and when it go to higher energy level, the population in the alpha energy state and beta energy state become equally populated. That means this and this become equally populated. Then what is going to happen when it become equally populated? When we shine continuously the radio frequency, the molecules, sorry, the nuclear spinners that are in the alpha energy state will go into the beta energy state okay this is known as the absorption process absorption process okay S 
some molecules in the beta energy state will deoxide to alpha energy state. This is known as a situmulated emission. Situmulated emission. Emission. By deoxiding, they release the same frequency out and detector is detecting find first when there is the absorption there is a peak okay detector does not show any uh, uh, frequency here but when there is a situated uh, emission the same the frequency that is absorbed the same frequency is emitted out and detector is detect detecting this frequency and the peak has been vanished okay and the property of these two transitions upward absorption transition and the downward situmulated transition will become same that means we write here probability of w means probability of upward transition from this is basically a plus one by two state and this is basically a minus one by two state probability of transition from uh, plus one by two state to minus one by two state become equal to probability of downward transition this is downward transition from uh, this is minus 1 by 2 state minus 1 by 2 state to plus 1 by 2 state okay this condition when this condition occurs this condition is known as a saturation okay just a minute I have a some important Okay, when the probability of upward transition and probability of downward transition become same, this condition is known as a saturation. Or we can say in simpler words that probability of upward transition from this is alpha, alpha to beta is equal to the probability of downward transition from beta to alpha. Okay, we call this condition is a saturation. In the saturation, what happens? the population uh, between the two energy levels become same that is n alpha number of spin states in alpha energy level become equal to number of spin states in the beta energy level and the bottom in distribution is this slightly equal to the alpha but in saturation what happens the number of particles in alpha and beta become equal that means bottom in distribution is not satisfied but and what happens in this case first we see that in saturation this is a major problem in the NMR spectroscopy there but that there is a saturation but in NMR spectroscopy we find that this both distribution is always satisfied that whenever we uh, see that it is satisfied always then how it is satisfied how the excess population because by this distribution it signifies that alpha energy level is slightly more populated okay but in NMR what we feel that in saturation there should be a number of particles number of spin states equal to the number of spin states in the beta but it is not a case we did not find any of the case like this but we always find the case this number of beta is nearly equal to the number of alpha and by taking this situation the saturation situation of uh, uh, as per this situation, we should not get a signal, an MR signal, because the frequency that is absorbed, same frequency is released out, and a detector will not detect any signal. So, how we, but in an MR spectroscopy, we find this, we observe the signals, and we observe that this uh, relation is satisfied. This is not satisfied at any anywhere, okay? And, uh, then how this relation is satisfied and how we get the signals in NMR because there is a one more process that is this is known as a relaxation process that is occurring in the NMR spectroscopy that uh, in LS of these two process there is a one more process this is known as a relaxation process This relaxation process. This relaxation process maintains the bottom in distribution, and this relaxation process is responsible for NMR signals in NMR spectroscopy. How? Let us see. First, what is going to happen? 
this excess nuclei suppose we are in initial state we have not uh, gone to the saturation or when the saturation suppose that when the saturation has satisfied what happens when we apply the radio frequency some nuclei in alpha energy state absorb the radio frequency and go into the beta energy state okay now the energy is absorbed but these nuclei what what they will do these nuclei they excite okay relax or we can say more uh, related term they relax into the lower energy state the energy they have absorbed they will not emit it out but what they do they uh, they release it, this energy to the solvent that is uh, where the enema where the sample is or they release this energy to the certain status but not release the energy out when the energy is absorbed and the energy is utilized in the sample there what the uh, energy is absorbed we get a peak but there is nothing that will go out and and detector will not detect the the frequency and we get continuously the nmr signal okay so if we uh, want to know what is the uh, relaxation if we if anybody will tell you what is the relaxation process relaxation process is in simpler words it is the process which maintains the lower energy state alpha energy state slightly excess populated okay or in the more quantum language we see that relaxation process is the process which uh, maintain the lower energy state highly populated by transferring its energy to the lattice lattice means the solvent or atom ion that we, we will discuss later bit ahead or uh, uh, to the slatis or to the spin stage. This is known as the relaxation process. Okay. If you find, if you want to find out this uh, topic from the book, uh, you consult. Uh, I will tell you. I have prepared this topic. If you find any confusion more after watching my video, you consult uh, Palia. It is fourth edition, okay. Page number I uh, don't remember this time. And second is Shama Data. I will check first. Shama Data, it is a second edition. And third is Drago. Okay. And fourth is Benwell. Okay. And fifth is Atkin and Paul. It is 10th edition. Okay. These are the five books why I have prepared this lecture. If you find any confusion, please consult these books. Page number I don't remember this time. I have to check them. And uh, you will find this topic from these books. And the mechanism of the uh, these relaxation process and in detail, it is given in Banwell and in Atkin, but you can't understand Benwell Atkin until you will not consult the, these three books. So, consult first these three books and after that, consult the Benwell, you will find everything. And the mechanism is exclusively given in these two books only. Okay, let's come to our own discussion. So we have discussed the relaxation processes. Okay, relaxation. What is the relaxation process? But this relaxation process is of two types. We write here relaxation process process is of two types. One is known as Supin supin relaxation. Supin supin 
relaxation second is supine radius relaxation supine radius okay supine radius relaxation these are the two types of relaxation processes what is supine supine relaxation in supine supine relaxation we have the supine state in higher energy level okay the supine state of one nucleus that is in higher energy level it imparts it transfers its energy to the supine of another atom which are in the lower energy state okay the supine that are in higher energy state transfer its energy to the supine which is to the nuclei which has a supine in lower energy state okay what happens what what is going to by this the the supine state that relax into the lower energy state but this energy has taken to the another supine state it will transist go in the higher energy state okay so one supine transfer its energy to the lower supine and lower supine will go into the higher okay but this process is not much important because the population will remain same it will not change the population between the alpha and beta energy status okay this is supine supine relaxation and what is the supine lattice relaxation supine lattice relaxation is the supine of one nuclei that is in higher energy state okay this supine this nuclei this supine state imparts its energy to the lattice okay lattice i will discuss a little bit, a bit later it imparts to it its energy to the lattice and itself go into the lower energy state with the result the population in the lower energy state will increase and the population in the higher energy state will decrease so this supine lattice relaxation is responsible for responsible for maintaining the bow demand distribution law okay and when the excess population will become in lower energy state and we get an nmr signal okay lattice means uh, we have a nmr sample we have a sample uh, of which we are going to do nmr but this is in the solvent medium and this solvent also contains some atoms ions or electrons so the lattice is a general generic term general term for these solvents atoms ions or electrons this energy in the this supine state in higher energy state imparts its energy to the solvent okay solvent takes its energy and uh, and and push this beta energy state to the lower energy state and this energy uh, when takes the solvent these uh, atoms molecules ions undergo the vibrational and rotational mode okay we will write few lines first in supine supine relaxation i will write in short form ss means supine supine relaxation the nucleus in higher energy state higher energy state transfer it is energy to the nucleus which is in lower energy state with the result of what happens the nucleus the supine state which is in lower energy state will go into the higher energy state and the nucleus and the supine state which was initially higher energy state will go into the lower energy state so you write here with the result the nuclei in higher energy state will go into lower energy state
and the nuclei which was in lower energy state will go into the higher energy state. The nuclei. And the nuclei. Which was initially in lower energy state. Lower energy state will go into the higher energy state. By this process, what is the consequence? Consequence of, of this process is that the population in the both energy states will remain same. That means they will not alter the population. So this process is not uh, much important for us. So we will write consequence of this process. The population between the two energy levels remain same. The consequence. The consequence of this process, the population between two between the between the two energy status. remain same okay this spin spin relaxation has a another name this is also known as a transverse relaxation or transverse why it is known as a transverse relaxation we will discuss this in the mechanism because we understand why it is known as a transverse relaxation in the mechanism of relaxation processes okay this is about the spin spin relaxation now the second is the spin realities relaxation spin realities relaxation it is a short form s minus spin realities relaxation the nucleus in higher energy state transfer its energy to the radius okay when it transfers its energy to the lattice, what happens? This spin state will go into the lower energy state. With the result, the spin state relax into the lower energy state. What happens to the by this process? What is the consequence? Consequence of this process is that the lower energy state will remain highly populated or more populated and the uh, higher energy state will remain low populated. So the consequence the consequence of this process. The lower energy state lower energy state become slightly excess 
एक्सेस ऑपरेटेड एंड हाई एनर्जी स्टेट बिकम स्लाइटली लेस ऑपरेटेड Okay, and this lattice. What is this lattice? We write here lattice is a general theorem refers to solvent of sample. or atoms or ions present in the sample atoms or ions or electrons as well present in the sample okay when this lattice takes energy from the higher spin state these atoms ions or electrons will undergo the vibrational and rotational modes the lattice will undergo rotational and vibrational modes Okay. This spin lattice relaxation is also known as a longitudinal relaxation. We write here or longitudinal. Longitudinal relaxation. This as well we know uh, get know uh, in the mechanism of the relaxation processes. So the next is now the mechanism of relaxation processes mechanism of mechanism of the relaxation processes or mechanism it is slightly lengthy so we will discuss the uh, mechanism in the next video so thank you for watching